Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video I wanted to show you guys an example of when you can actually hit performance issues inside of Godot GD script. Okay, and the idea is that it's a survivors-like project, so you have a bunch of dudes running around the screen and they all basically have the same mindless behavior where they're just chasing wherever the player is located on the screen. So we can see that currently I broke the enemy into its simplest form possible, which would be to make it a node 2D. Uh, basically an object on the screen that has a 2D position but doesn't have any of the character body 2D extras like being able to slide against things it would collide with. So Node 2D by itself actually has no collision. The other areas that actually have a collision shape are the hitbox and the hurtbox here for hurting the player and taking hits from the player. And then the orc is basically set up the same. If we look at the chase state script, which is where the bottleneck is, uh, you can see that all I'm really doing here is getting the direction of the player, the direction of the NPC, calculating the direction between that and using that to move the object, which is the NPC, in the direction based on an amount calculated from the speed the, of the character and then the delta time between frames. Now this code itself doesn't take a lot of processing power to really run, but the issue is when you have too many characters in the game trying to do exactly the same thing, uh, then it can add up over time. So I gave myself infinite health, so I'll just kind of switch over here and make sure the profiler is running. Okay, so now I'm down here at the chase update. Yep, so we should see the chase update is going to get to the top of that list for uh, the functions that are actually taking a lot of time to update. Yep, okay, so we have like 34, 40, etc. chase updates going at the same time. When it's running each of those per frame, that's one per character, so roughly this should correspond with the number of characters. Well, it should be one to one, but sometimes it doesn't always update to the right number over here on the right. So we should see that we can get like hundreds, maybe even a thousand characters on the screen with like no problem whatsoever. Uh, but sooner or later, it's really going to add up. And remember, these characters have really dumb AI. They are literally just checking the player's position and moving in that direction. There's no collision physics or anything like that. If you were using a character body 2D, uh, I think I noticed you can get about half as many on the screen at the same time, which isn't that bad considering that uh, character body 2D can do stuff like move and slide, so it can slide along a collision shape's edge and that sort of thing. Um, but Rigid Body 2D, which has full in-game physics for the 2D engine, uh, definitely performs a lot worse, so you want to use that more sparingly. So let's see where we're at right now. If I scroll down, we're definitely in the thousands. I'm going to pause the game right now because that's starting to lag a bit. Okay, we can see 5,300 updates per frame gives us 27.45 milliseconds. If you want to get 60 frames per second in your game, uh, basically, it has to be a total across everything running at the same time of about 16 milliseconds. Less than that, and we start to get major performance hiccups like we are right now. So if we keep going, it's going to you know, start to lag significantly more. Uh, but remember that this is running in Godot GD script. Uh, if I switched over to C Sharp or I optimized the script further, uh, maybe reducing the number of translate calls per frame. It could be like once every couple frames if a character is off screen or something. Then I might be able to get more performance. And at this point, it's just too much. So let's see. It decided to not show how many characters. Okay, I'll unpause. And then let's look for that. Pause again. Uh, if it's not going to show how many characters there, then maybe we can just check the hierarchy. We can see how many enemies there are. I see 4,500 at the bottom of that list. And even the Godot editor kind of is lagging at this point. Okay, just to show what kind of computer I'm on, it's a Ryzen 5 5600H. It's a laptop. It's a few years out of date at this point. So it's not really like a high-end machine or anything. Um, but you probably do need to keep these kinds of things in mind. Oh, okay, that's interesting. It just decided to work again. Did it clear all the enemies or something? Okay, let me go down here and we will play it. I wonder if I somehow deleted all the enemies. I'm not sure. But yeah, you can see that it's basically the number of enemies is really the main issue here. Okay, so that's that's enough. I would say um, after a few thousand enemies, uh, like 2,000 if you have a character body 2D and maybe four or 5,000 on a node 2D with this stupid simple logic of just move towards the player 
then you're going to end up with some issues. But if your character is more complex than this, if they have patterns, if you're adding navigation agents or stuff like that, it's all going to add up. When I do the Unity C Sharp version of this project, I'm definitely going to see how many characters I can squeeze out um, at one point. So that's about where I'm at with the GD script project at the moment. There's a lot of ways to optimize it. I could make the enemies more interesting and less likely to group up, though the more logic you add in, uh, probably the more enemies you have to remove for performance reasons. But having 200 enemies that are actually interesting rather than 5,000 grouped up on the same point on the screen probably is preferable. I could try writing some of the performance critical code like this chase state in C sharp. So this state machine is actually uh, components from Limbo AI, which is written in C++. And I believe you can code the scripts here in either GD script or C sharp. So it would be interesting to see if I just change this little script over to C sharp, how that would come as a performance. If I do a C-sharp version of the project, I'll be sure to let you guys know how that turns out. But at a certain point, you probably have to either reduce the function calls or reduce the number of characters in the game. I can't think of too many games where you'd really need to have 5,000 characters on the screen at the same time. I so yeah, there's a lot of directions you could go at this point if you were in the same situation. But hopefully this kind of illustrated at least the main point that uh, you can hit hiccups if you have a lot of things going on on the screen at the same time. And it's kind of important to spend a bit of time and think about how you would solve that because uh, you can't really just have your frame rate crashing in your final project. So I've been Chris. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at my script survivors project, which is going to be translated into a full GD script course. I'm working on that at the moment and then right after the Unity C sharp version. But for now, I'll see you guys in my next video.